Um, I don't know. I love doing comedy. It's my favorite thing to do. Uh, when I'm not doing comedy, I don't I don't really do anything except hang out. I love sports. I'm a sports guy. You got any sports people in here? You a sports fella? Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite sport? Football. You like football? Yeah. I just don't. <laughs> Is that Raiders? Raiders, baby! Oh, uh -huh, that's my buddy Eddie. All right, yeah! <laughs> I used to work with that man. The result of Allure tracksuits together. Uh, off of, uh, Sepulveda. <laughs> I used to live here back in 2007, 2008, 2009, and the one good friend I made was Eddie. And thank you, buddy. Yeah. I got <laughs> I remember this. I remember that I was working at Sears Automotive changing oil over on 4th and Colorado in Santa Monica. That's a condo now. But back in 2007, they had a, a mechanic shop there, Sears Automotive. And did you know that they hire mechanics without experience? <laughs> yeah, I got hired. And I don't know anything about cars. And they had a Craigslist ad that said, no experience necessary. And I'm like, that's me. <laughs> I was 21, I had zero experience, and they trained me for two weeks, I was on a computer, and I would just skip through the tutorials, because I'm like, it's boring, I didn't like even compute what this means, and then after two weeks, they're like, oh, you finished? Yeah, yeah, get out there, start working on the cars, and I was like, oh, damn, <laughs> I did not pay attention to that, I kind of treated them like, you know the safety and sexual harassment videos they show you when you start a new job, you're like, I get it, I get it, I get it. Don't be a creep, I understand. But this was about changing oil and, and tires and batteries. This was important stuff, and I did nothing. And I worked there for about a month, and I was so bad at it. One time I changed the differential oil, which I didn't even know what that was. I learned that day what that was. It was an Escalade, and Escalade had more stuff under there than the other cars that I was used to. And I'm like, that looks like the oil pan. And I opened it, and I'm like, that doesn't look like oil. <laughs> it doesn't smell like oil. Then I called this other guy over, Rich. He just had gold in his mouth. He had no original teeth. And so that's how you knew he knew stuff. And I was like, Rich, is I, uh, what, did, what, did, what did I do here? And he goes, oh, that's a differential. You fucked up. I'm like, that's what he said. Those were his exact words. And I was like, oh, no. And I was like, I'm guessing that's more expensive than oil. He's like, that's the most expensive fluid. I was like, well, it's in the thing now. And they still didn't fire me. They just kept me around. And then I got, uh, they, I saw a job interview for Sweatsito. It was a velour tracksuit company. And it was close to my house, and they were paying 12 bucks an hour, which at Sears Automotive, I was only making nine. And I'd never made 12 bucks an hour before. That was the most amount of money I'd... I'd I was ever gonna make per hour um, <laughs> until comedy now. Like comedy now, I make more than twelve bucks an hour. But even comedy then, it wasn't twelve bucks an hour. It was chicken wings. I got paid in chicken wings. So twelve bucks an hour, I was like, I gotta get this job. And the dude Rich that runs it, he was just had. He, he looked like Colonel Sanders, like he bleached his hair and his goatee. So I did. I was interviewed by a guy dressed like Colonel Sanders, wearing a loud velour track suit. And I'm like, I'm not getting this job. And then he goes, your name's really Zoltan? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I want a Zoltan to work here. And I got the job. And I'm like, that's amazing. Like, I love Hollywood. This is so good. You just get here on looks and name alone, you know? And he told me, he's like, I only hired you because your name. Like, that's amazing. I'm running a velour tracksuit company. We can't have a, a Gary back there. We got a, a Zoltan back there. So I worked in the bag with Eddie, and Eddie would customize the velour tracksuits to, like, for names and stuff. And I would pack the orders. And uh, I was so bad at all of it, man. <laughs> There's so many times where I put the wrong tracksuits in the wrong boxes and they got mailed to the wrong people. <laughs> I'm just bad at work, like... <laughs> like, I tell people all the time, this is the only thing I've ever been even kind of good at. And people are always like, no, you have more to offer. And then I tell them some of these stories and they're like, yeah, stick with this, man. <laughs> You can do it, dude. Like, I believe in you, you know? <laughs> But yeah, that was good times working at the Blue Tracksuit Company. They're doing good. Okay. <laughs>
Bounce? That's the end of that story. Very much enjoyed it. Never good at any of my jobs. They would keep me around because I was funny. Like, I worked at a medical supply warehouse in Orange County, and I remember one time, I turned 21, and I wanted to go to Vegas to celebrate my 21st birthday, so I scheduled the trip six months in advance. And then, uh, like a month before my trip, they're like, we're having a mandatory inventory on that Friday that I was supposed to leave. And I told my, my manager, I was like, dude, I already booked the hotel. I'm just my 21st birthday, I'm going to Vegas with my friends. And he's like, it's a mandatory inventory, you have to be there. And I was just like, I had a moment of self-righteousness. I'm like, I ain't coming. <laughs> I'm turning 21 once, and I'm staying at the Stratosphere Hotel. <laughs> I'm gonna go have a great time in Las Vegas. And so I didn't go, I didn't go. And then I came back that Monday, and my buddy Robert that was working there, he's a good buddy of mine, he got called into the office, and they fired him. And he came by and he's like, um, I got fired. And he said goodbye to everyone that left. And I go, what'd you do? And he goes, I was an hour late to inventory. <laughs> and they fired him. And I was like, I didn't show up at all. <laughs> and then for the, the rest of that day, I was just waiting to get fired. Yeah. I was just waiting. I'm like, yeah, maybe now. Maybe they're gonna let me have lunch. And then they're gonna fire me. Maybe after lunch, they'll fire me. And then they never fired me. And then the next day I came back, and then I'm just waiting, and I'm like, they're still not firing me. And then Wednesday, still nobody's firing me. And then one of the assistant managers I was good with, and I was like, hey man, you guys fired Robert. And I'm like, yeah, he was an hour late to inventory. And then he goes, and then he realized, he goes, you didn't even show up. And I was like, oh, shut up, did you? Like, I don't think people have noticed that I wasn't here. And he goes, I look into it. I'm like, not too hard, but just bring it up lightly, you know? And so the next time they had a big manager's meeting, Jason Clark, this big dude, he was like the foreman of the whole warehouse, he brought it up, this dude brought it up, and he goes, hey man, you fired Robert for being late to inventory, Zoltan didn't even show up, and Jason goes, Zoltan, he's hilarious, we can't fire him. <laughs> and that was an exact quote. I remember I called my mom up and I told her that, and my mom's Hungarian, communist, like blue collar worker, and she was so sad to hear that I've been able to entertain my way into a job. <laughs> Sometimes it's not good to be the best employee, just be the most likable, you know? Show up late, but make people laugh, and they're like, ah, no, he's good for morale, you know? <laughs> it makes people like being here. <laughs> It's true. It's true. Like, if I had a company and this dude was 15 minutes late every day, but like, he made people chuckle, he'd be like, ah, all right. He's a good guy. It's also saving us money. We don't have to pay him for that 15 minutes. I actually said that to my manager once. He goes, Zoltan, you've been 15 minutes late every day for two weeks. And I go, yeah, but I'm clocking in then, too, so I'm still getting the same amount of work done, and I'm saving you guys, like, how much time a week? And he goes, to show up on time. <laughs> <laughs> Solid points, man. I just don't have the work ethic. My mom, she has the work ethic. My mom's communist, Hungarian, and I used to, I got a job. The proudest she ever was of me was in high school. I quit the football team to get a job as a waiter at a retirement home, and she was so proud of me. She's like, oh, my boy is going to work. Oh, her heart was so full. I'd bring home like an A on a test, and she'd be like, that's nice. But when I got a job, she almost cried. <laughs> She's like, my boy is going to go to work. Oh. And then I'd come home, I came home after that first week, and I'm like, I hate my job. <laughs> and she goes, Zoli, just think about your paycheck. And I'm like, that ain't helping. It's not doing anything for me. <laughs> She's like, that's what you have to just think about your paycheck. And I'm like, I just didn't have that mentality. I've never been motivated by money. I think that's why comedy was so lucrative to me. It was so enticing. They're like, there's no money over here, come on over. I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> you have me there, man. Yeah, you guys are a good group, man. I really appreciate you coming out to this show. You know, it's Friday the 13th. You walked up, you saw the building, <laughs> saw the clientele, and you walked in, and I appreciate that. <laughs> there's plenty of times, man, especially in this city, there's plenty of times when no one would come to see me, you know? This is new, man, I appreciate that. I remember I used to do bringer shows in at the comedy store when I was working at uh, the Santa Monica Sears Automotive. 
I used to do bringer shows, and what a bringer show is, is they let you go on stage if you bring people to the show. And I didn't know anybody. Like one time I had my mom drive up from San Diego <laughs> and go, on, you better come up, otherwise they won't let me perform at the comedy store. So she drove up and sat through an entire show, and then they put me on at the end, because I only brought one person. <laughs> and she was like the only one left in the audience. And she, was, and she still laughed, she was like, <laughs> she's, uh, she's so damn supportive, you know? And I remember one time I was at the mechanic shop, I was doing oil changes, and I was trying to get over to the show at the comedy store, the Bringer show. And I showed up, and no one, no one was there to see me, and the horrible person that was running the show was like, well, you don't get to go on stage, because no one, no one came to see so I ran outside and I just like was begging people to come in and this one guy was just walking by himself down the Sunset Strip I'm like, excuse me, do you want to come in and see the show? And he was like a Norwegian tourist or something <laughs> and he was like, uh, what? I don't know, I can't do accents, but you know what these people sound like. like what? Working, working, I don't know. <laughs> you know, you get it, right? I'm not an accent guy. That's not why you came, okay? You weren't like, oh, this guy's accents are through the roof. No. Please go over there and lay your hose in and suspend your working. <laughs> Stroking off or whatever he said. And, and I was like, excuse me, can you please come into the club so I can go perform? They won't let me perform if I don't get someone in there. And he was like, I don't know. I was like, I'll buy your ticket and I'll buy your two drinks. Just come on in. And then he came in. I had to buy him a ticket and two drinks. So that's 30 bucks out the door. And to go on stage in front of pretty much him and like four <laughs> other people. And at the end, he was like, that was great, Horkin Dorkin. And <laughs> like, <laughs> so that's my relationship with the city is uh, oil changes and velour tracksuits and Eddie. And, uh, and a Norwegian tourist that came in to see my show. So for the fact that 50 people showed up, I really appreciate that. So thank you very much. Yeah, you guys it means a lot. I'm gonna wrap up with just a, a couple more, a uh, couple more jokes, and then we'll go, uh, we'll go to Chick Fil A or something. <laughs> or I don't know, whatever is nearby. Shot. Oh, well, shots. <laughs> Eddie, you have not changed. <laughs> This is who you were back then. I love it. Let's get some shots. He used to smoke weed at work <laughs> while working on the velour tracksuits. He had me do it once. He's like, you do it. And then I couldn't work. I just stared at a wall. And I'm like, you gotta pack these boxes, man. <laughs> and that guy didn't fire me because he's like, I gotta have the Zoltan in my velour tracksuit. I know. What a wild ride. <laughs>